Hello, everybody. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodemont. Over there, we got Christopher Draves. He's looking into the camera like... Hey, everybody. Now, I was just making sure we got the uh, red light for recording. Welcome back to the show. Thanks for watching. This show is brought to you by the wonderful folks at Hockey Locker, Toyo 2, West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at 414-800-7585 or visit their website at hockeylockermilwaukee.com. Milwaukee Admiral season tickets are now on sale. You can call them at... 414? Uh... Pause. All righty. After long finding pieces of paper through all of the little statistics sheets that we made yesterday, you can call them at 414-227-0550. Ask for any Milwaukee Admirals rep. Uh, they will take really good care of you. Also, uh, half and uh, flex plans are on sale. Ask They're, for my rep, uh, Ryan McCampbell. Who says hi to you, by the way? I spoke to him earlier today. Oh, yeah. I forgot to check my email like usual. Um, also, uh, check out my rep, Brian Mertz. Um, he, uh, he's a good rep, kind of funny guy, much like Ryan, Ryan for Chris. They're yeah, Ryan is a good ticket rep. And if you need my name, well, it's on the screen. And uh, or just say from Milwaukee to Nashville sent you, they know who we are. Yeah, yeah. Especially those two. <sighs> yeah, I think they get a kick out of us because we're covering the team. Yeah, the one thing that for us that has always been uh, for our show is for fans by fans. We were fans first, media yep. second. Yep. Speaking of media, before I get into this. Uh -oh. I agree with the Preds to a Preds fans on one thing right now. Kira Hammer, but I'll get into that later on in the show. It was her job to ask a question. The bad part about that is the question sucked. Only because of the guy was angry. Everybody's going to think that. He basically pulled at Aaron Rodgers. He had He's in the middle of a bad game, and now he's going to turn his attention and attack an innocent reporter that's just doing their job. Who could have asked a way better question than that? She was trying to sugarcoat it. Yeah, well, you can't sugarcoat this. I guess. All right. I mean, whatever. I guess we could have this argument where we're both blue in the face, but go ahead. Do your thing. Well, we, we were trying to crack the joke earlier about being like undisputed or un uninterrupted, sorry. Yeah, yeah, you're right, uninterrupted. I don't watch those shows. <laughs> no, but in the spirit of ESPN. Whoa, that's not an ESPN show, dope. You, you're, you're attacking a different company. You're trying to say that we're impersonating. Uh... All right, before we get into this game, just Preds fans, please hear me out. All right, you could be the 2000, 2001 Atlanta Thrashers. Atlanta Thrashers that only won out of 82 games, 17. In their last Cannot 10, don't believe us. won one game. If you don't believe us, go to okay. NHL.com, click on standings, click the year, scroll all the way down. They'll right find that line. All right. Stats in this game. Nashville outshot them 33 to 26. Face-offs. Carolina, uh, 64. Nashville, 36. Nashville yeah, dude, Carolina play. was dominating on the face-off percentage. Nashville, on the power play, nothing. Like they usual. Had, oh, they were 0 for 1, but I'll get into that a little bit later, but let's talk about this. Carolina, on the power play, three for three. Penalty minutes, six for the Preds, two for Carolina. Hits, 34 for Nashville, 21 for Carolina. By the way, I wouldn't be surprised to say, see, um, I did not see who hit him, but somebody hit Nino Niederreiter. If y'all can uh, hit the comments down below uh, with that name. Um, yeah, unfortunately, I missed that hit, too. Uh, yeah, I was busy getting something to drink. And I just forget what I was doing. Apparently um, not paying attention to. Okay. Um, 
so yeah, Nashville had 34 hits. Carolina had 21. Block shots were 13 to 11. Carolina giveaways 10 to 8. Carolina. Yeah, coming into tonight, Carolina was like 10 for 22 on the power play. So now they're like 13 for 25. All right, scoring in the first, Morgan Geeky with his first of the year with an assist from Jake Bean and Nino Niederreiter. Uh, Bean, sixth, or Bean seventh, Nino Ryder sixth. That was on the power play at the uh, 9.06 mark by Carolina. Uh, Brock McGinn, yeah. he scored his ace. Uh, with an assist by Fogel, Fogel, sorry, Fogel, his fifth for Carolina at the 11-11 mark. At the 11-27 mark, Doug Hamilton, Dougie Hamilton, whatever he's going by today, he I've heard Doug Hamilton, I've heard Dougie Hamilton. Yeah, probably all I, all I think about whenever I hear of Doug or Dougie is do 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 do. Sorry, Nick yeah, Moore. that cartoon. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, he scored his second of the year with an assist from Svechnikov, his 13th, and Jesper Faust, his seventh, like I said, at the 11-27 mark in a two-minute span. Carolina wrapped off three goals. Morgan Geeky scored in the second period for Carolina on the power play with his second of the year with an assist from Bean and Pesci. Uh, Bean's eighth, Pesci's 11th at the 8-15 mark. In the third, Martin Dikas scored his fifth on the power play with an assist from Svechnikov, his 14th, and Hamilton, his 18th, at the 438 mark on the power play. Scoring at the 1528 mark of the third, Nick Cousins, his third, with an assist by who else? The guy being talked about in every trade rumor for Nashville, Matisse Eichel. That was Eckholm's sixth, right? I believe so. I yeah. my screen kind of glitched on me here. Yes. Yeah, sixth. that was Eckholm's sixth assist. Yeah. All right, in that Nash. Well, hey, like usual, the Predators showed up in the third period. Let's put it this way. All right. Anyone who's going to put this on Pekka, just go away. Yeah, just go away. Three you apparently goals. don't watch hockey if you're going to blame the goalie 100% when the team did nothing to help them tonight. All right. I will be getting into something a little later, but making his Nashville Predators debut, stopping three of three, Kazmir Kaskasuba. Yeah, yeah. Pekka Rene did not have a good night. I'm not going to rip on him. I'm not going to say nothing more about it. Not even going to get him his stats because it's just not his. It wasn't his night. It does. You have those days, but it's just not your night. James Reimer was in net for Carolina, stopping 32 of 33 with a 0.970. Same percentage. Reimer is a good, solid backup goaltender. Given this year, um, any other team, he would probably be starting. But uh-huh. you need two solid starters in, in this season. Otherwise, with as many games as they're having to play consecutively um, or with maybe a day break, um, it's it's getting to that point where um, that's heavy into consideration. Your reference- Honestly, I think Carolina might burn out Reimer because uh, Peter Morazic's out with that broken wrist. So well, they, they, might have Nadal- they have Nadalkovich. They'll be all right. All right. Um, with that being said, uh, your referees were Francois Laurent and Pierre Lambert. Uh, linesmen were Julian Fournier and Pierre Ricard. Um, head coach for Nashville is John Hines. I'll be getting to that in a second. Uh, head coach for Carolina is Rod. Brenda Moore. Scratches tonight. Rocco Grimaldi, Eric Hall, and Dante Fabro. Yeah, I told you Hollow is a healthy scratch. Just because he's a uh, scratch doesn't mean he was healthy. Okay. I've seen them make guys scratches just because they can. He may not be healthy. So, uh, because watch this scratches for Carolina, Vincent Trocek on the IR, Peter Morazic on the on IR, the Jake IR. Gardner on the IR. Okay, good point. And Dante Fabro, any hurt? Suspended. Oh, well, okay. Oh, yeah, two to get, well, one game left now. Correct. All right. Going into this. All right. So we're going to, this is not going to be the fun area. All right. 
Are you going to talk about the thing that we were looking at off camera, or are yep. we going to wait until we get official word about that? Or we're waiting official word on that one yet. But let's talk about the Kara Hammer thing. Kara Hammer after the third period. Second period. Second. Second well, period. Sorry. After the well. second period, ask them what you need to do to get back. Oh wait, let's. Let's she wait. asked Brian Johansson. You can go to our Facebook page. It's up there. Yeah. You, Kara Hammer asked him, did Carolina get lucky bounces to score these goals? He goes, yeah, I guess. I guess. I mean, yeah. he's not trying to discredit Carol, Carolina's skill. And, and the minute that you underlook your opponent, you're going to get beat. So for him, that was the smartest play he could make to an extent. Now, the what next should question, she have asked? No. Seeing how she allegedly asked the bad question. What was she No, the, the, the to bad ask? question came, the, that was one half of, of, of a two part bad question. Uh, let me get into both and I will actually reiterate something that I would have asked instead. I know. Just me personally. All right. So let's talk about the second question. What are you going to do in the third? You're down yeah, four they, nothing. Admit, that's pretty stupid, right there. The second you're part down of the four question. nothing. You're yeah. down four nothing. Yeah. What are you going to do in the third? Personally, if I was asked that question, I'd have. What do you think? I said, I would go out there and score two goals. I'd be a smartass about it, person. I mean, like, you're right. What am I going to do in question, the third? I'm going to sit in the locker room and not come out until my coach is fired. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, I'd be a smart be so I'm gonna go out there that and score be, two goals, would... and then I'm gonna hang out with the mascot. <laughs> yeah, that would be me. I, I'm gonna go hang out in Philly yeah. with Grady. Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, it's it's getting to the point where you're well, sugar... give me a cheese steak. Yeah, you, you know, you're you're asking a sugar coated question that is pointless. Okay, what are you gonna do in the third? At least try to do something positive to take out of this game. Let's just be real there. So they, what do you have the most issue with? The second question or the first one? It's a double dumb. The first one wasn't dumb. Asking an honest question. Do you think they were just getting lucky bounces? Because it seemed like every time the Predators took a shot at the net, it would hit the damn pipe instead of the back of the net. You saw how many pucks were clanging off of the pipes? The Predators were just inaccurate that... with their shooting. That is a lack of confidence with a lack of assurance from somewhere inside the system, inside the locker room. So how is asking if he thinks that Carolina had lucky bounces a bad question? I say only part two of the question was bad. Well, the reason the I say that it was bad was because bad. you're discrediting everything that Carolina has done, who is now number one in the, t in the whole league. But it made it look easy as hell. In order to be number one in the league, you need a combination of skill and luck. But so, yeah, but then, okay, you're telling me that them going to the far side and putting the puck in basically an empty net is luck. Well, scoring two goals in what, a minute 30 or two minutes, whatever it was, that's pretty lucky to get two goals in that short of a turn. Let alone three. Yeah. But no, what I'm saying is they outskilled them. They outworked them. They did everything right. Nashville did everything wrong. Yeah. Hey, well, sideline or off, whatever you want to call them, uh, rink side reporters, they're people just like all of us. They have bad nights. And this is like her first bad night. People are grilling her like she always does it. If she well, always asks stupid questions, there'd be more players angry at her. Uh, yeah, just it? ask Barb Murphy why she don't work for the team no more. Thank you. So apparently she had one bad night. Don't grill her. But I agree. The second part of that question was stupid. I already told you what I'd say. I'm going to go out there and score two goals and then party with All the right. mascot. So let's be real here. All right. You're down by four. You're going into an interview with a player. You know he's upset and you know he's frustrated. Okay. So you, you you could already like when you look before they start the interview, you can see visibly he is frustrated. So when you're gonna ask a question like that first question to a guy who is visibly frustrated, which is why I say it was dumb. 
Okay. But anyways, what she so what, what she should I would... like, dude, you're pissed. Just do your thing. You don't have to be here if you don't want to. Look, I would legit say, you know, at this point, I would legit ask, at this point in the year, with the way that things have been going, where do you see this team heading? Because in a real sense of that, you're giving an inside look at one of the leaders of your locker room. And if he don't have faith in this team, then that goes way deeper than just the players. That goes to the coaching staff, to the GM, to everybody else. Yeah. But I think Brian Johansson did uh, expose a possible uh, flaw that the NHL should uh, get rid of. Mid-game interviews. Exactly. You can only do pre and post. Not of this mid-game crap. Because yeah, you're I, just asking to get your reporters grilled by fans and players. You're yeah. just asking for it by having these stupid-ass mid-game. Just options. ask Matt Duchesne. Yeah, exactly. You know, you're, you're, just, you're asking for trouble doing mid-game interviews. Just saying. Oh, or asking dumb questions or sugarcoating uh, things. You can ask a stupid question during a post game or two and people will get pissed and grilled an interviewer person for that too. Well, we've done it. Aaron Rodgers, perfect example. He calls reporters in Wisconsin stupid if they ask a question after Green Bay loses. So it is what it is, man. Anyway, with this all being said, let's be realistic here. And, 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 and I'm actually going to let Chris answer this question because oh. it's a question that I, I, I've seen thrown around quite frequently. Go. Oh. Is John Hines an NHL head coach? No, he's an AHL head coach. He <laughs> should be. He, he should For saying definitely... he doesn't even deserve to be in the ECHL. <laughs> no, nah, he, he should be in the AHL. Uh, I think if he was in the ECHL, he would easily thrive – I'm saying he's currently – he lost his players. The players just don't respect him. Uh, they've tuned him out all year. They've tuned him out last year. I think he'd have better shot at developing guys, but when it comes to dealing with veterans that have been in the league and know what they got to do, I think there's a huge disconnect. I think he should probably find his way down to the minor leagues. Now, the other part – um, you know, when it, that's why we have a certain coach down here in Milwaukee that I think should be given the uh, interim tag the rest of the year. Like, and, 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 and hear me when I say this, look, for all of you people aboard the Poil, fire Poil bandwagon. Okay. Let's just you included. So hear me when I say this. Okay. All right. We're going into a draft in a bad year, trading away defensemen, right? Okay. Do you know what the top pe- top five picks are this year? Oh, do They're you? all defensive position players. Oh. On every scouting report I've seen. So no wonder Poyle's tanking, because all he wants to do is draft defense instead of draft scores. Now, with that being said, okay, if Poyle can, say, pull off defensemen, he can actually pull in one of the few forwards that score early in the draft and doesn't have to hope that they're there say if he trades and gets a first or something like that and have to pray that there's a scoring forward there somewhere in the late round of the first but here's the thing with this upcoming draft class there's not enough scouting to be done so who's to say that your prediction of the top five that's what the scout's job is no matter what you have no matter okay look no matter how much they play, no matter how much they do, you have a book report on every player. Travel that ever... restrictions prevent you from going to see these games if you can't find footage online. You don't. They have Leagues the... not playing limits what content is available if the league ain't playing. Everyone eligible for the draft this year played last year. That's last year and this year. Last year, the Predators had a decent team. This year, they're playing for ping pong balls. What happened last year doesn't translate to what happened this year. 
Well, unfortunately for everybody else, that's what they're they just going to gonna go have to hope and pray that these uh, prospects, that these prospects are as good as they were last year, even though that there's a, you know, a delay in play this year. Yeah, the only the only junior league in the North America area playing is the USHL and the um uh, the Western Hockey League just started yesterday. Yeah, I saw that. And um, I guess in Canada, they're about to hopefully have some type of a season for the uh, Quebec Major Junior. And Ontario Hockey League has uh, called off their entire season. Yeah, so there you go. With That just proved my point right there. If you base it solely off of last year, that could immediately become a crapshoot this year because they didn't have now, time. Now, one of one of the things yeah. I have seen happen a lot with teams from the Quebec or from the Ontario Hockey League, okay, yeah. a lot of these guys are being sent off to um, uh, universities or in, in Canada, inside Canada, yeah, college basically, and they're just playing so there college. just to get their scouting reports. Now, with that. With everything that, without the limited video footage and everything like that, scouts are still allowed to be at these events based on they are technically employees. Of- yeah, but what about uh, what about Canadian scouts that want to draft people from down here in America, and they so can't Nash- necessarily. Uh, let's let's just use Nashville as an as an example, okay? Before the season started, their Canadian scouts were told, okay, this is the COVID restriction. Get up there. Yeah, you just stay up there until you can come back down. Yeah, pretty much. You go up there and scout as much as you can, wherever you can go. Now, Nashville, I know if I remember reading their staff report correctly, they have three Canadian scouts. So they have one for the Quebec Major Juniors, one for Ontario, and one for the West. I mean, scouting the American collegiate scene might be a little easier because of an invention called flow hockey. Now, but the other thing... Uh, with the other thing, and, and this is one of the things, with the USHL, one of the things that is very good there is Hockey TV. Hockey TV is a app that you can get to watch the USHL and as well as the juniors in Russia and... Um, a keyword, is it free? No, it, it, it costs a pretty penny. It's uh, $100 a year, so... Yeah, but if you're a scout, that's a drop in the bucket because that's a business expense. Correct. So in those extents, um, you know, uh, Russia, you're going to be able to scout the whole year for them. Um, I wish the KHL was easier to watch. That way we could do a better job scouting. uh, The uh, the, uh, Swedish Hockey League, they started right around the same time as the uh, Russian Hockey League. Everybody started on time except for American teams. Yeah, the North American leagues are the ones that were kind of hit the hardest. Yeah. Um, now, with that being said, all right, we're hoping within the next month or so to have some more, hopefully, Admirals news coming for you. We're also hoping. In we're the next hoping week, tomorrow a bombshell don't hit. We also caught, hoping. We caught wind of something, but we can't talk about it yet. Yeah, it's nothing official. As but a, it's a, it's a, it is a bombshell. We're just, uh, yeah, waiting for confirmation to talk about it. Speaking of which, you might want to check to see if we get any confirmation tonight or else we might have to go and do a separate video after this recording. Because we caught wind of something big that could be brewing as early as um, right now. We uh, we do our we do our research, you know. We John can't... Hines just said in a post game press conference that he is expecting Pecorine to play every game until UC Saros is healthy. Yeah, but there's no confirmation how bad of an injury Pekka has, even though he didn't it won't get matter from the game. It won't matter. He'll start him either hurt, and that's and on him. That'll be on him. Tickets to his downfall. Hey, stop stealing my stick. Ha! Yeah, you'd like that. I used the Machine Gun Kelly reference. Ha! <laughs> but now we, we all have fun over here. Look. We try this... having fun, even though there's been a dark cloud over this team all year. Look, Outside of that first week when they were like two and all. Let's put it this way, and let's look at this realistically, okay? 
every shortened season that Nashville has had, they have won a minimum of the, the best record they had. They won 20 games. Yeah. We're getting close to that. We're only about four away. Okay. So if they can make it out of four, out of 20 games to 20 games, out of 56 game schedule, they played 48 in 2013 or 2012, 2013 during a lockout season. And they finished at the bottom, ended up picking third, drafted Seth Jones. For the love of God, Poyle, goal scores win you games. Defense wins you championships. You have that. Leave it alone. Goal scorers win you games. Hey, a yes or no question. That thing we caught wind of, would that answer your goal scoring wins games requirement? Yes or no? You don't got to no, go into details. It, it, it falls you back into that defense wins championships thing. Oh, that's all that would answer? Okay. Yeah. So it would also go. fill a gap of uh, the uh, old IR situation. Ah, okay. All you right, know, the you. list that's about as long as, uh, you know, Let's just use a winter quote here, but Santa Claus is naughty and nice list. Our mm-hmm. IR list looks like the penalty box when the Preds had 20 guys in it. Yeah, I saw that photo. Jeez. That wasn't tonight, was it? No, that was a while oh. back, but it's a meme that gets used quite frequently. Yeah, because the Predators do spend a lot of time in the box. Let's put it this way. The coaching's not working. If Poyle don't turn it around after this year, can him? That's I'm 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 giving you Poyle the benefit of the doubt. If you can't fix it, and and even if you do say, hey, look, we're rebuilding, at least you're okay. We're rebuilding. Yeah. You know, it's not. We're going to be competitive. We want to get back to the cup. It's a win now. That's yeah. you. Okay, either we're having a youth movement and we're rebuilding, or we're going to be competitive and we're going to try and win the cup. Make up your mind. You can't have both. Well, the Milwaukee Bucks tried that. Look at him. But that's the difference. It's the same principle. They they wanted to stay competitive, but they also wanted to attempt to get a higher position in the draft, and it backfired on them. Like you said, either, ask a, that any Bucks either fan, tank or be a competitor. Just ask any Bucks fan about TJ Ford. There you go. Or Andrew Bogut. But that's beyond the point. Bogut was an injury problem, but that's not his fault. Well, but like I said, that's beyond the point. Anyways, what, what I agree with Dan, you know, either be competitive or tank for ping pong balls. Talk to Ottawa about how that worked out for him. You know, three picks and they couldn't even land. One of these days, we will have an editorial for you folks about this. Now, with as long as this video has gone, I'm you sorry. Know, we folks. have went longer than I thought we would. I'm sorry, folks, but I'm tired knowing the system tonight. You will get it the next time the Preds win two in a row. Oh, yeah. That means not for the rest of the year, guys. They'll lose two in a row before they win two in a row. Yeah. So they got to win two in a row before. schedule. Yeah. They'll lose two in a row before they win. On, on a real note, well, you'll probably get it this weekend. Yeah. Uh, maybe I'll force it out of them tomorrow because <laughs> I got a, I got a feeling that what we've been reading might actually happen. All righty, but we'll be seeing you guys tomorrow, tomorrow for sure because we got the Everblades of South Carolina Stingrays tomorrow night. So you will be seeing us in some way, shape, or form tomorrow. Maybe also, I'll be in person. Who knows? Also, um, you can also buy Admiral's gear. On MilwaukeeAdmirals.com, click on their merch page. It'll take you straight to the square up. Please don't forget that season tickets are on sale. The Florida Everblades just announced. Uh, announced I think the, you could still get a COVID uh, Milwaukee Admiral mask. Correct. You could also buy this shirt. A little bit of retro merch here. Yeah, so, you can also buy Milwaukee Admiral jersey. You've seen me wear that on camera tons of times. Or probably that flag in the back on Dan's wall or the pennant. You could buy this the from Milwaukee right here. to Nashville street sign as well. You can buy that. Or road to Milwaukee or road to Nashville run through Milwaukee, whatever. The so no, road to Nashville goes through Milwaukee, which was the inspiration for this. Yeah, that's it. That's it. 
<sighs> anyway, I would like to thank everybody for pay- for watching. We will see you guys tomorrow. Peace.